So, have you ever wondered what it really takes to make a hundred thousand bricks? Now, ma uh, manually, that is, manually make them. And just how much the workers who do the actual mixing and molding end up taking home? Well, we're here to take you through the process here on Morning Rush. Now, we'll give you the people who do all the dirty work in the construction industry and reveal how middlemen reap the, the rewards. Well, how do they do this? We take you to Anyanga to give you a better picture. These are the real hard workers on the ground. Yet there is indication that they don't get the full reward of their hard work. Simply because they work in the open and middlemen pounce on them. We give you the story of Alex Sanyamwera and Takawira Chimbuzi from Nyanga. Takawira Chimbuzi talks about what they have managed to produce a working at this location. So after producing 89,000, how much do they get when they sell? A semi hard band brick costs six to eight cents, and for 89,000, a middleman or established companies that pounce on them and up to $7,120 for 89,000 such bricks. This is more than 100% a profit for just buying the ready-made bricks, raising questions as to how these hard workers on the ground can enjoy the full benefits of the labor. Small and medium enterprises development, a cooperation marketing manager, says their goal is to try and help those working in the open to become established. We're actually addressing um, issues to do with um, SMEs that are working in the open, not just in Chitunguiza, we also have... Um, an SME park in Gazaland. Uh, we also have an SME park that's in Gweru. Um, in Mkoba, we have an SME park as well that houses uh, various SMEs that work from there. We've actually recently um, acquired land as well um, in Pindura and in Gwanda, where we have proposals that we want to build more SME parks. So the ideal situation we actually want to go into is to facilitate and develop SMEs from the infrastructure side and not only from the finance side, the development finance side that we offer, but from the infrastructure side. So actually looking and working and discussing with many of um, the city councils around the country. The hope is that SMEDCO and other supporting organizations can speed up their initiatives to ensure that these hard workers get their full reward. You know, I think it's very unfortunate that you mm. put in all this hard work, and it's not an easy task. I mean, yeah, yeah. molding bricks, mixing all, it's its not an easy task, and it's a skill. Yeah. But you come off the short end of the stick. So I really do hope the measures are put in place that ensure that they at least get, um, you, right now for them it's a decent living, but they earn mm. they actually earn their work. I mean, it, it, there's a couple of things there. I mean, firstly, <coughs> of course, the middlemen come, they buy the bricks at, what is it, 3,200, you said, Mugo, and they're selling they sell it, it at uh, around 7,000. 7,000, that's 100%. You're uh, six cents, eight cents per brick. Okay, so 100% profit. So I think there's a couple of issues here. One, it's about maybe formalizing the informal. So those workers who, who are in the informal sector, because this is what they are, really maybe they should become more formal and be able to then become a proper business. That's number one. Number two, they can also get organized and maybe get together and start shipping the bricks or any other product that they're making, particularly if you're an informal sector or SME, to Harare or to major centers to sell at that profit and get that markup. And that will really help their livelihood because it's the middle men who are making the money here and all that they're doing is what they're hiring a truck they're taking it to pick up the bricks and they're dropping mm. them off to sell them that's all they're really doing yeah, right uh, yeah i mean that's yeah, not work whereas yeah, the precisely. people who are doing the real work you saw them there in our story mm. uh, at the end of the day if they're able to actually reap uh, what they're supposed to reap in terms of the hard work that they put there they they get the uh, the profit that they need 
they can actually invest in more machinery mm. and uh, be able to operate in a way that's more viable. At the end of the day, it actually don't uh, improve just uh, the the way they are doing business, but in, t in terms, it actually uplifts the yeah, communities that, that they are coming mm. from. Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, I can tell you there will be a new formalization policy coming out soon. The government is coming up with a policy to see how they can put in place measures to get the informal sector formalized. And there will be also a conference next week looking at that same issue run by the ILO. So it's interesting to see this thrust towards formalization of the informal. Because as you know, 70% of all business in Zimbabwe is done in the informal sector. And mm. that is ridiculous. Mm. And it's really to the detriment of the formal sector. We need people employed in jobs. We need companies having business licenses, trading properly, being able to export and so forth. And there's a lot of opportunities being missed by informal traders who do such excellent work. Yeah. Mm. I think also the other thing that they, that they then also need to look into is creating chains amongst themselves mm. that allow them to then um, eliminate the middlemen. Mm. Mm. So you could have one end of the chain being where the production is done yeah. um, and they've sourced somebody who then transports for them. Mm. One of them, uh, one of the companies probably goes with them to Harare to sell or wherever it is that they're taking their bricks but it's a chain that works yeah. within you know within a, a formalized structure um, that cuts out this middleman that's coming and just buying from them and they have no other involvement going yeah. forward oh, from Cand that point. Candice you're so right value chain value chain and the links are just so critical in terms of making money and uplifting our citizens you're so right. Let us know your thoughts on this how best can uh, they go about ensuring that they get the actual value for the hard work that they put in because you know you can see it takes a lot of skill it takes a lot of patience this guy has been doing this for seven years so surely he knows something we don't about how to make these bricks as strong as he does. So he deserves to get that actual money. Let us know your thoughts. The feedback platforms are the Zim Papers TV Network Facebook page or at ZTM Prime on Twitter and at ZTM Prime on Instagram. But in the meantime, don't go away. Morning Rush will be right back with markets and sports.